Hello, welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be tearing down this Line 6 FB4 guitar pedal and I'm going to be looking at the inside and uh, hopefully reverse engineering it and uh, after that going to take a look and see if we can hack it and make it run from something other than what it was originally intended to be used with. Uh, it's a pretty hefty device, definitely a metal case. Uh, some rubber feet on the bottom to hold it in place so doesn't slide around too much. It uses an RJ45, so like the Ethernet style connector. Um, yeah, let's tear it down. So this thing comes apart pretty easily. It comes with a nice screw tray. Just slides out. That's it, the thing just comes right apart and we're in. Of course, uh, we can't see any of the electronics. Um, they're all on the other side of the board except for this one connector here. So, and loosen all these. You can see they put two washers on, on either of these ends because the nuts get too close to the, the pads on the board. So they just put that in there just to protect it. These do have uh, shake-proof washers built in here, and they're they're actually captive to the the nut, so it's a nice feature. Pull this apart. Again, parts tray, very convenient. So you can see the buttons on here. When we push these down, see they just push this little plunger out. And there's a spring in there with a little plastic bit. And when you push down on those, they actually push these tactile buttons. And uh, there it is, there's the inside. One of the things you'll notice is uh, most of the components are on this side, which you'll notice is it's kind of ugly over here. And those components were this is the one part that's on the bottom side, it's a big plastic housing, so that, that component is hand soldered in afterwards. Everything else on this board was um, wave soldered, so machine assembled. I've already been in here once and I changed a couple components out. We'll go over why that is in a minute. So I've already done a little bit of reverse engineering on this, of course. I'm going to start with some basics here. So this is our RJ45 connector, it's like an ethernet plug. It's got eight pins and uh, just going down the list, pin one and three are ground or zero volts. Pin two and four connected to nothing. Pin five is a data pin, which is coming into the pedal. Pin six is the output sensing for all of the switches. And then pin seven and eight are V plus, which is about five volts. So one of the things we notice about this uh, pedal is that it just has a resistor ladder here. So when you push each one of these buttons, you just change the resistance at this point over here is reference to ground. Essentially, if you use a pull-up resistor on the other side of this, you can sense uh, a voltage, an analog voltage, and it will change with each one of these button presses. I went through and figured out all the resistor values and calculated out what you would need for a pull-up to 5 volts in order to get a, a reasonable range of voltages on the output here. Um, so one of the traps with this thing is if you push this button here, um, none of these other buttons are going to do anything because this is the lowest impedance path to ground. So this is not a uh, multiplex system. It will only recognize the lowest impedance path. So, uh, you know, this switch will take over this switch, and this switch will take over this switch, and this switch will take over for this switch. So, it can only really sense one switch at a time. And uh, but that's the downfall of using one pin for a whole whole line of switches. Uh, so the whole switch version of the pedal is is taken care of on one pin, which is pretty cool. All right, and uh, the rest of the circuit is to turn on the LEDs. So that data coming in, the 5 volts, and obviously ground is used for that too. And all of the circuitry that's on this board, all of this is just to turn on these four LEDs. Alright, so here is the rest of the circuit. <laughs> it gets a little more complicated, but it's really not that bad. So we have two main uh, integrated circuits. One's a serial to parallel shift register, and the other one is a 6 hex 
Schmidt trigger inverters. So uh, 74HC14, that's the inverter. And then the serial to parallel shift register is a 74595 uh, over here. And some of the pins are just tied into certain places. So the next thing is the inverter. And uh, there's a few different circuits that they used to to kind of make it function from one pin, whereas this shift register needs uh, several different clocks and timed data in order to work. The basics of it, the data comes in here. We go through two inverters. Um, one of them goes through a little filter network here. This is just an RF filter. It's got a 100 picofarad capacitor and a 470 ohm resistor. So this is just like filtering out any extraneous noise that might get in here. Even though it's already got a Schmidt trigger before, there might still be some that gets in. And then that goes through a high pass filter. So a one end capacitor with a 2K resistor to ground. So the first thing happens, our data comes in, goes through one inverter that goes out to A, which is actually the data coming into the register. So if this thing pulses a bunch of times, that's gonna go directly to A. So that's gonna come in here. There's a little bit of a time delay from this one N and two K. That little bit of time delay causes shift clock to happen. So you have your data come up and then your shift clock comes in and that latches that into the register. So these two kind of take care of themselves. And then the other side, we have the inverter, and then we have a larger capacitor and a larger resistor, which makes this a lot slower. So what happens here is this doesn't latch until later. So you're, you only need four bits of data. So there are four bits come in here. And then by the time that fourth one pulls low, this latch clock makes a pulse. And then that sends the whole thing out to the LEDs. That's kind of the fundamental operation of it. Now, based on the calculations I did, which are the on screen right now, these capacitor values are for much higher speeds than what you can get out of like a typical Arduino. So I went and changed these capacitors to 100N and 200N, and this lets me use the much slower speeds that are on a typical Arduino Uno. So now I can actually get the LEDs to turn on and off at least. If not very organized, at least they're turning on and off. So overall, looking at this circuit, I can say that it's very hackable. I can definitely do something with this. So I think the next step is to put it back together, hook it up to an Arduino and see what happens. Okay, so I'm back and I have my little Arduino set up. I got a couple LEDs over here and then I have the actual pedal board set up back here. So this is just plugged in with an ethernet cable going over. I just have some resistors and the LEDs connected to digital output pins on here. Uh, it's just a regular Arduino Uno. And then over here, there is a few ports plugged in. So we have our V plus or V minus, so it's our five volts and our ground. And then we have uh, A0 is connected into the analog from the four buttons. And that's got a 1K ohm resistor or 1.1K uh, resistor pulling it up to the uh, positive voltage rail. And then there is a data line coming from pin 11 on the Arduino going back into there to turn the LEDs on and off. So we can turn on a switch, turn on another switch, turn on another one. Yep, that one doesn't work as good. I have a suspicion that this is why the pedal was um, maybe taken out of commissions because this switch does not work very good. That little tactile button in there doesn't always fire. You gotta push it a little harder, that's all. Again, again, it's a foot pedal, right? So I'm pushing it with my fingers. So if you think about it, if you're touching it with your foot, it probably fires every time without any issue, but. So we can see, there we go. You gotta hit it pretty hard and then it works. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, that's actually working pretty good. And when we turn on A, you'll actually see the LEDs. They're actually blinking. Um, there's no particular rhyme or reason to that, but it's basically just sending out code anytime the channel A is on, just to kind of indicate that something is working correctly. So the LEDs are actually flashing, but there's not really proper code to turn on just A or just B or just C or just D. Uh, so obviously they're all off now. Push the button, the LEDs come on. And that's about it. So there's some really basic code. I'm going to put that up and we'll talk about that for just a minute. All right. So this is the Arduino code. It's pretty simple and um, they're all kind of the same. So the first thing that happens, you have your variables at the top, you have a, a setup loop, which runs one time, and then you have a main loop that runs repeatedly forever. So up here I have a uh, definitions required for this the the big thing to remember is that these are momentary switches so when we push the button 
Um, we need to store the state of the switch somewhere. So that's all this is doing up here. And then we have our setup, which is just defining our inputs and outputs. And then we get into the main piece of the code. So first thing I do is run a little bit of a loop and we're doing an analog read inside this loop. And this is doing some averaging. So when you push one of those little buttons, a lot of times they bounce. So you'll get like, you know, 10 reads of the switch instead of one. And this just helps to smooth that out a little bit so you don't get false reads. And then the next thing we do is check to see if the state has changed. So I don't want it to oscillate. So if you hold the button down, it will turn on, on, turn off, and then turn on, and then turn off. I don't want that to happen. So this just checks to see if the state has actually changed. And then the next thing that it does is actually toggle the switches if it's within a range that's specified here. So these are our analog read values that are coming in. And if it's one of these values, it toggles the switch. Uh, everything else down here is just to turn on and off LEDs. Uh, and this, this timer, this little delay down here is, is important. So without this delay or without tuning this delay, you get multiple triggers. So there's some bug in this up here, which has a note. I didn't spend too much time on this. It was just the bare minimum to get it functional and then send it out. So here's the code. Um, let me know if you want this down in the comments and I can post it somewhere. All right. Thanks for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Um, it's just a really quick look at this pedal and, uh, it looks like it's very hackable and definitely usable for lots of other projects. So I'm going to see what I can do with this thing. And then, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll probably see it in some future projects going forward. All right. I had to do it. It's the world's most complicated light switch. Yay. Yay. Why would anyone ever do this? So there it is. It's a guitar foot pedal controlled in Arduino, which is controlling a power tail with a relay in it, which is turning on a light bulb. It's the world's most complicated light bulb. It had to be done. I think we uh, will have some fun with this project. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe.